I don't know if, if Mike and JR remembers uh, morning or the, uh, the afternoon we went over. This is the St. Mary's River, and it's right by where uh, there's a ferry that goes over to Sugar Island. And, uh, well, we had a hot dog there, and we took a picture by a boat, I think. But this was two weeks ago. It was six above zero. We just had a nice little snow. The sun was coming up, and the St. Mary's River was, you know, it's going to start its freezing kind of thing because, after all, it's, it's up there, you know. <laughs> but things are changing in, in the eastern UP. And it's unbelievable how God's word really works. Working in the eastern UP of the MI. <laughs> Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I don't, I don't know if you guys are all aware of it or not, but right here in the United States, there's still missionary work to be done. There are still some places that, that because of one reason or another, because of the denominations who, who don't encourage their, their parishioners to you know, pick up a Bible and look at it and to check things, that there's actually people still out there that are, that, that are groping, that's never heard the truth. Uh, you know, the, the Friday before I went up there, we weren't sure where we were going to live. We went back in August before uh, and had uh, secured a, a place with a deposit. And we were already to move into this little log cabin that's not too far from Rudyard, Michigan. And the day before I went down there, I had the truck all packed up, had my trailer packed up because we were going to have to uh, build a garage and a box to store the things. And I, I worked it out with the guy that we were going to rent from. We were actually renting the house uh, that he was living in because he was going to move to Ohio. And so I get word from him that he says, hey, look, Tim, I don't know what to tell you. But the deal fell through at closing. And so, you know, I told Jill, I said, I'm going. And the reason why I went, you know, I, I'd been told by other preachers when I was getting ready to go up there, it would take a long time to get support, the support that you need to do that. So yeah, I think you started way too late for when you wanted to go. But I couldn't believe Hey, we, within three weeks, we had the support that we needed. And I said, you know, th things are going to work out. So literally, I, I'm, I'm going up there uh, and I'm talking on a cell phone with, with my wife, Jill. She's down visiting Ada. And her and Ada get on the internet and they find a place where I'm driving. On the, in the same time, I'm, I'm looking for a place to store all the stuff that I was going to build in the garage in a box and had to store the garage in a box and a place to store it. So, you know, at, at that point, you're like, hmm, you know, should I do this or not? You know, but I, I'd give my word to the churches by September 22nd, I was going to go to work and, and that's what was going to happen. Uh, the, the guy that we used to spend our vacation up uh, when we go on vacation in a little resort, he said, Tim, he says, you can have our, our chalet. Uh, he's got a bunch of cabins and stuff, and there was a chalet, and he says, we can let you rent that till May until you find a place to rent. I, I'm, I'm very thankful that we found a place because I, I go down there and I check it for him, you know, during the wintertime, make sure nothing's messed up. And we couldn't get down there. I mean, the snow was so deep, even with four-wheel drive, you couldn't get down in it. I was like, Jill, I'm glad things worked out. But they did. They absolutely worked out. I looked at other two places, they didn't quite work out. And we ended up on, on, in, in what I call Libby Cabin. It's really a little chalet. And this is the place that we're currently renting right now. We've got to be out of there by the spring, so we're in the process of trying to make uh, other arrangements because uh, he wanted us to buy it, but things didn't work out where we could. But I believe that Providence brought us there because two doors down from us, uh, we, we got a uh, couple of our members that are attending with us now. And it's, like I said, I, I don't think things ever uh, happen on accident. But the cabin is, is right here in uh, where the little arrow is. And it, it's actually eight miles from Pickford. Pickford is uh, back over here uh, to the south and to the east. 
but it's still considered Pickford. And you know how you guys are, well, places are as far as towns and stuff are concerned. But it, it would be the closest to church that we'd been in a long time. I mean, we, we drove 26 miles to, to Valparaiso for uh, almost 20 years. But it, it, things work out. And we realized that we weren't in Crown Point anymore when they had hay bale racing on hay days. <laughs> They, they would they would have these races where families would get together. It was so it, it was like we went into Mayberry, and I don't mean this disrespectful, but th this was a community. It was a really really sweet community that we ended up in. But we had two neighbors that said, "Whatever you do, don't plow your driveway." We've got these big tractors, and we fight over who gets to play with them when when the snow gets done, and they can plow our driveway in less in a little over six minutes. So I got this, I, I was prepared. I went up there with, you know, with my snowblower and, and everything else, but uh, we, we ended up in a really nice place. And this is the Eastern UP Upper Peninsula Church of Christ. Now this was back in March uh, 2017. Uh, if you look, uh, Sally Bertrand would be off to your, your left, and next to her is uh, Lori Davis. I don't know if you remember from my reports, but this would be the first time that we actually got to meet uh, Miss Bertram uh, since the baptism. I didn't know who she was when she came in because when I'd seen her before, she had a bathing cap on. What happened was Lori says, I want to be baptized. And we took her to a place and there was four women that were working out in the pool next to her. Uh, they were, when we got down in the water and they seen what was going to happen, they were very respectful. We baptized her, and she come up out of the water. They clapped. And then I heard a voice come from out there. And she said, would you baptize me too? And I, I thought maybe she was just making fun, you know. And I said, are you serious? And she said, yes. I'm serious. I go to the place where I go. They don't baptize people. They don't immerse people. And I've been reading my Bible, and it says that I need to be immersed. I don't believe things happen by accident. And anyway, when she showed up, we didn't know. <laughs> we weren't quite sure who she was. And she said, well, the last time you see me, I was in my bathing cap. <coughs> Lori has some real health problems. And uh, we, she, she could hardly get out. She's got all kinds of allergies and all kinds of other things. And, uh, but uh, uh, we've been praying for her, hoping that her health will get better where she can get out. And then right back behind there is uh, the Hazes, Monica and Rick. <laughs> Rick suffers from Parkinson's disease. People in the UP are tough. I didn't realize how tough they really were. One morning, it was uh, back, in, back in March. It, it might have been, I think, about a week before this, or two weeks before this. It had got down to, to 12 below zero. And there was a good wind chill going on. And I figured there was no way that they were coming out. But here they come, they pulled up, and he was happy to come and worship. Happy to come and worship. I mean, six inches, they shut, they shut down things up north sometimes. You know, I heard that down here, you get three inches, they might shut roads down and stuff. But if you live in the UP, you get out. You know, you, that's part of the, you, you, you acclimate, acclimate to, the, to the climate. And if you could, you could, either, humans don't hibernate very well. Depression sets in and everything else. So they, they go with it. And, I, and, I, and then in the back, I got Jill. And then Paula Young, who lives in Detour, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. She started going to one of our studies in uh, Cedarville and has been going with us uh, to services ever since. We're working on her, on her, uh, her husband, uh, Kevin. I see some pretty good prospects there. But we fast forward a little bit, and we got Mike. Mike Lamoth, and I'm going to talk about him a little bit later. But Mike is a very interesting character. I was sharing with the guys at lunchtime that he had never seen anybody baptized before. Something that us people who've grown up in the church kind of take for granted. He'd never seen anybody baptized. Jill says, oh, yeah, says, they even have baptistries in, in, back behind where the preacher speaks. He said, really? 
that's nice. He said, that would be going in the Manuskan River. And if you'd seen the Manuskan River, it's kind of muddy, you know, so. And it beats breaking ice, too. <laughs> so. And then in the very back, you'll see uh, the Renos. Uh, she's had, since I, I've known the Renos, I think she's had three strokes. But she, she is, uh, uh, her and Floyd, they're, they're, they're a character, the two of them. They're fun, they're fun to talk to, and she's just a sweet lady. And they, they uh, <laughs> well, the, the couple weeks ago when I was in the hospital and my son-in-law came up to preach for me, they had record attendance. And uh, she was so sweet. She says, well, your son-in-law did a good job, and I, I was tickled for that. But we got some really sweet people. I told them jerks wasn't allowed in the church. <laughs> But no, these were really, really good, sweet people. And, and they're starting to love. It's interesting to watch. You know, I, you know you, once again, you take things for granted within the church, right? You know, the way people should act toward one another. And then when, when uh, they hear that, that Rick's had a rough time, you know, Mike would come over, how are you doing? And Paula, you know, worried about Monica and worried about uh, uh, Floyd and Nancy. You know, they, you can see the interaction between them, and it's just so cool. But this was taken uh, 11, uh, just uh, uh, this last, last Sunday, so. But if we can get them all together, we'd have 10. So, and I know that doesn't sound like much, but a little over a year ago, it was just me and Jill. And that, that you talk about awkward awkward you know the Bible teaches us you know that where two or more are gathered in his name I'm with you as, as well two or three are gathered just think about that for just a little bit I'm gonna get into that but this is the way that we had church it wasn't all our the pews weren't already there we're worshiping in a township hall in the basement we have to set things up so I was talking about a garage in a box well, how about a church in a car? Because that's what it is. I don't know if you can see, well, you can see the little sign that we put in the back that draws people. And you've got to have signage, right? This sign right here, I, I had to put it to rest because it couldn't take another winter in the UP. It's, um, it's made out of that uh, lawn. It's called lawn. It's quarter-inch plywood. And the letters are starting to peel out. Those letters cost like $3 a piece. Up there, anyway. Everything's a little expensive sometimes, and not for good reason. But uh, we, we'd set it up in the morning. I, I had a design set out, you know, where I could pop it together. And I mean, snowing, blowing, 30 mile an hour winds. It took a whooping, but it still stayed there. But you know what? That little sign, it's on Main Street here in, in, in Pickford. And I know 1,500 people, there's not a lot, but this is a thoroughfare. And people would say, Oh, you guys are the one with the sandwich sign out in front of the... So we were the sign people. And uh, right on the other side of the, uh, uh, the double doors there is the Main Street Cafe. And like I said, this is circa 1960. It's like time traveling. The communities still meet together in, in the little uh, cafes. And they talk. And you talk back with them. They say hello to you. There's interaction that, that still uh, is in this little community like, it, like you've never seen it before. But uh, we, that's where we met the Renos. I, I invited them to come. I says, you know, and the way I, I say, talk about the Church of Christ, I say, we're a no bells and whistles, no uh, New Testament Church of Christ. Well, what do you mean by bells and whistles? Well, I don't sell the gospel with a hot dog. Because right now the denominations are out there, and I mean, they got the billboards. You know, we used to make fun of them on the way to uh, uh, Valpo because they have some pretty neat looking stuff. It'd be, be nice to stop and have some barbecue on the way back. We kind of tease about that a little bit. But I'd I, I tell them, I said, Could, would you like to come and, and worship in spirit and truth? And people would agree. They would say, you know, we've gotten so far away from that. That it's, that it's not it's not the same. So that, that worked out for us. And this is our new sign. We uh, I got a plastic one. 
It's going to be able to handle the weather a little bit better. But we, we do utilize this thing for uh, events, uh, such as, oh, how about a gospel meeting? You know, with, with JR, and what I, what I did was I, I put it on a poster board, and we covered it with cellophane in case it, it rained, and we put it inside there, and it worked great. And up there, you could put stuff like this out on the highway, and people won't bother it. In fact, it blew over once, and somebody had, had picked it up uh, for the last event that we had. And that's, give me our, our good old gospel song. Okay, people up there, they, they do this ecumenical, I'm saying that wrong, ecumenical kind of thing, where all these churches, they do things together. And I thought, hmm, I need, I need to work that just a little bit. So I invited the community to come to an a cappella singing. And they thought, oh, that's a good idea. Guess what? The Presbyterian churches, the Methodist church, they put it in their announcements. <laughs> no, I, I'm not joking. They did. And we had people from, from other denominations come. And guess what? There was a little bit of an opportunity there, wasn't it? The first year, last year, year when we did it, I did it on the history of, of music and worship. I went back in the Old Testament and I talked about how, you know, the, the, they, they did music where they had the musical instruments and whatnot along with the singing. I went to the New Testament, I said, well, they just had singing, but where did, where did it all begin? And I, I give the history of the denominations as far as when did the music start in the denominations? Only 150 years ago, and they were like, whoa, didn't realize that. Pickford Pickers kind of made fun of me after that because they'd say a cappella and all this. He said, that's that a cappella pe preacher, you know. But it was all in good. You know, we can tease each other and it's, 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 it's all right. But I opened up some, some minds about testing the things that they've been teaching. You know, I, I don't know if you guys ever read the, the book. It's a pretty popular book nowadays. It's uh, Muscle and a Shovel. Really good book. I'd suggest that to uh, be reading. I wouldn't give it to somebody you were working with and, until you needed something to, to verify what you're teaching. Because that book alone won't do it. You just don't hand them a book. You sit down with them and you take some time and work with them. But this year, I, uh, 15 people showed up, and 15 people heard a lesson on, you believe in Jesus, but do you believe what he says? You know, because everybody wanted to sing praises to God, right? I mean, that's, all, that's good to hear. But I had the opportunity to, to share the gospel with another 15 people. Um, The next thing that, that we found out that was being very, very helpful is the uh, Chippewa County Fair. Uh, last year we did, they have two fairs in one county. Uh, that's figured, I think that's a little strange, but uh, the second fair wasn't very well attended. We didn't do that this year, but last year we did both. And last year I used the Simply the Bible program that we're using right now in my studies. That's, that's what I call it. Uh, I'm getting free advertisement to let the community know that this is happening. You know, when it's, when it's just a couple of people, you know, you start trying to figure out ways that you can do things for free, right? The, the township hall that we meet in, they don't charge us a penny. We can go in there just as long as we put the seats back. There's, there's 11 on each side. As long as that's done, we don't have any problems. We pick up after ourselves. And don't don't mess with the box that's back behind by this little storage area. It says don't, don't pick it up so we don't touch it. But, but you work with what you got. And I found out that the good Lord gives you what you need. So we had a place to worship. We've got some free advertisement. I, I've got the Bible to teach. And as a result, you know, the people seen the ads in the paper says, oh, they didn't call us the sign people. Well, a couple of them did when they recognized us from the restaurant. But they come back and said, you guys are the simply the Bible people. Because I've seen your advertisement in it. And then we could give them the information. And, and if you look, we had a place for them to sit down where we can do some studying. And, and I had my PowerPoint thing going. I had it on a, on a loop. And I would loop some things about music, about, uh, about baptism about all kinds of other things that, that might be interesting to people and we'd catch them. They, they would, they'd be watching and they'd look at there 
and, and but they'd sneak around the corners and watch, especially the the people from the denominations, because we this year, well, we didn't have much trouble last year, but this year was a different story. Uh, I don't know if you see the the older gentleman; it'd be off to your your right. That's Harry, and his booth was two two booths down over from us. And he was a devout Baptist. Every morning he'd come through there, he'd say, how are you false teachers doing? i go, whoa, Jill, we, we, we got a live one here. And he would watch what we were doing, you know, and, and I had discussions with him. He was very militant. I tried not to do that. That, that never works being militant. The gal next, uh, well, there, not this gal, but there was another girl, girl there that was an uh, atheist. And I talked to her, and many times when you talk to atheists, it's because they've seen what the denominations are doing, and the inconsistencies drive them right away from God. Of course, it's only an excuse as far as I'm concerned. But I told her, I said, I, I encourage you to pick up your Bible and read it for yourself. God is not an author of confusion. And I said, we've got these studies going on, and if you feel like you want to come and study, we would love to have you. And she says, well, my mom says, I, I'm going to encourage her to come. She still is a believer. And it seems he went over there and told her, says, says I'm going to give you something that you'll remember for eternity. And she says, what's that? When you're standing before the judgment day, God's going to say, remember that old man that told you you're going to hell if you don't stop believing what you believe? So the last day we're there, I'm helping Harry pick his stuff up. Carry it to his, he's an older feller, you know. And uh, she looks over at me and she says, I hope your congregation gets big. And she said it real loud, just an earshot of Harry. <laughs> so... But this was great. I mean, this year's we did ask a Bible question, get a Bible answer. And I don't know all the answers to the Bible questions, but I, it was a way to make contacts. It was, well, okay, if I don't have the, uh, let me, give, give me some time, I'll, I'll research it and I'll get an answer for you. And once again, we had it set up where we had the, the, the pamphlets out front, things that they could take. And one of the, the, the best contact that we came up with, I, I mentioned him this morning, and that's uh, Adam Morgan and his wife and his two kids. They're from the uh, Evangelical uh, Church. And I still am trying to grasp exactly what that's all about. But evidently, he goes from churches, different denominations, and tries to get support so he can go teach the Bible in Canada. Well, he come up, and we were talking. And uh, once again, I used my little slogan I, I don't uh, I don't offer I don't cheapen the gospel with a hot dog. And he says, Amen. He says, and, and hang on to this saying, what you lead them with is what you lead them to. In his own study, he's seen all kinds of things that was, you know, not right with the denominations. And he says, I want to talk with you. And I said, Well, we can have dinner together. And he calls me, what, a week later, I think it was. So said, we'd like to have dinner with you, and Jill, she acquiesces, and she gets a dinner together, and we spend quite a bit of time with him. Not only is he going to, he, he's been, he goes to two of our studies now. He, I've only got a year with him, and I, I ask that you pray for this feller, because I think that it, it, if, if we can do a little bit, he, he's read Muscle in the Shovel already, he loves it. He's, he's trying to get around it, and I think he's working through this is how could he go up and teach about the New Testament church and still receive the support from all the other denominations? But that's, that's the hope anyway. I got, I got another nine months with him. So that's in, in Ken Ross. And once again, Pick, you see where Pickford's at. And... Uh, that, that, what I, what, when we moved up there, I, I told you guys, I, I don't know if you remember, but we picked Pickford because it's kind of centrally located there in the UP. And I, I mentioned this. This is our flyer for simply the Bible. Well, for the, for the Eastern UP Church, but I, I put the studies in there as well. 
And people still up there look at bulletin boards. You know the old cork boards, you know, that people put advertisements on? And, and they still look at that kind of stuff because we got all kinds of people to our studies. We got Mike from a, a, a resale shop in Cedarville that hung our, our, our advertisement up. All we had was the ink and the, and the paper. And, you know, a little bit of legwork, you know, to go put the, the things there. And you have to go back and check them. Because we have other Baptists that don't like the idea of, of people from the Church of Christ being there. Because I think they, they look at us as kind of a, a fret. And, well, that's okay. So our day begins. We get up early in the morning on Wednesdays, usually about f between 5 and 6, eat a good, good lunch or breakfast. And we head out to Rudyard. Uh, oops. Rudyard's uh, located right, oh, it's about 30 miles, I guess, from where we're at. Starting up, up at the front, uh, the lady in the blue, uh, this is Jan Essenberg. Now, her husband was the minister at the uh, Christian Reformed Church in Rudyard there. He passed away. They've got another one in there now. And she hasn't hardly missed. She has some health problems and sometimes she can't make it. She read muscle in a shovel and made her madder than a wet hen. But she keeps on coming back. Not too long ago the Christian Reformed Church had, had, had voted to say it was okay to bring uh, women into the pulpit and she knows that's wrong. She's very astute Bible uh, student. The, the problem being is that that her fit, foot footnotes are all from the Christian Reformed Church. I'd like to give her another Bible. <laughs> but she sticks with us and, and then D, uh, she hasn't been able to be with us for a long time. Uh, she, uh, I think she went back, had to go back and live with a Sun down below the bridge or down in the lower upper peninsula of Michigan. And D, uh, I, we seen her about two months ago and she's in real bad shape as well. But D, she was, she was exciting when we first met her. She, we met her at the fair two years ago and uh, she come into the library and she says, we're gonna run out of room. And I said, well, we'll, we'll make room. And she says, no. She says, I'm a member of the Presbyterian Church. She said, we run out of room. Uh, we'll, we'll just take it over there. We got all kinds of fly, uh, classroom space. I says, well, <laughs> won't they have a rough time with that? And she says, no, I got a key. <laughs> so. I, you, you know, guys, this is what's going on in the denominations. And, you, and I was telling the guys, this, this, this is a, a great time to get in there and, and spread the truth. There are people that are looking for it and, and they're hungry for it. And these guys come back. Anya, she's a very interesting, she was the first one there at uh, uh, Rudyard. And the guy sitting next to, to Jill is Randy, who told her about the study. Randy says, this will fit you, Anya. This will fit you. Well, Anya took the, the, the material that we give them. We give them pan, uh, the sheets that we call them, oh, Jill, I forgot what the, but they're, 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 they're all, all about the study. It's sometimes 20 pages worth of stuff, but it's set up, you know, just like a class. They were used to these Bible classes where they went in and had cupcakes and they read devotionals and they did this, but when Randy, who is a retired school teacher, seen how we set up the curriculum, that it was actually uh, a, a, a like a school type of thing, he says, I'm coming too. And he, he, has, he has to be with his father down in the uh, Detroit area every now and then, and he works for a farmer on the side. But me and him spend a lot of time together. Besides in the class, we have private studies. We email back. He, he uh, emailed me last week and asked me, what was my take on the prodigal son? And so... I, 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 was, I was glad to give him that information. He's looked at a lot of my sermon um, outlines, and it's, it's been very good. Aileen Bittner that's sitting in the back back there in the blue. 
We had her for quite some time. She was excited about it. And we got to Matthew chapter 19 that talked about divorce and remarriage. And it seems that, that somewhere along the line, a minister had told her that, that it would be okay for her to divorce and remarry for no reason and that God was good with that. And when, when I, I, all I did was, pre, I said, well, what does it say, Aileen? And I had no idea that this was her situation. She just started bawling. And I don't know, I, I've lost contact with her. I tried to keep emailing her and stuff. And I got to be real careful because her husband is the sheriff of Chippewa County. But she knows, she knows. And then Dinah in the back back there in, in the pink. She's, she's dying of brain cancer. Last year, after she, she was one, oh, another one that we, we met at the fair, and she, uh, she says, I got four months to live. And that was last year when she told us. Please pray that I get a little bit more time with her. She's coming along. I, I just pray that, that she has you know, a little bit more time. And I've introduced you to, uh, right by be, between her and Randy is her sister, Jeanette. And she, uh, she's an interesting character as well. She was just going to come to bring her sister, right? Now she's coming on her own, which is pretty cool. But that's Rudyard. That's, that's the, the most attended work that we have. Once again, Rudyard's right back over in that area. You can see where Pickford is. Uh, the work in Cedarville, uh, that was Jill and Paula Wapala. And uh, uh, Shirley who came to, to just one of the, the, the times, and, and I tried to call her, but I haven't been able to, she won't return my calls or anything. This was, once again, this is serious Bible stuff, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't fluff, it was the real thing. But Ann Fisher, my goodness gracious. She was the first one there in Cedarville that we had. Uh, she's read the whole uh, book of Josephus because she wanted to know some, some background on some of the stuff that we were looking on, some, some uh, other things that, that would teach her about history, because she's been all over the world, she's been all over the place, she's like the, the man that rode the mule around the world, I mean, to hear her talk. But she is coming along, and it's interesting, we've got another guy coming in there now, his name is Brock, who just moved to the area here just a little bit ago. And when we're talking with, with Brock, you know, she's coming in and the things that she's been taught, she's coming in and, and being a part of the teaching as well. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool to watch that as well. And once again, Paula Young in, in the back there. Uh, Cedarville is right between I-75 and Drummond Island, so that's kind of centrally located as well. If you look, uh, Pickford's up at the top, but we've, we've looked, there's this place over there right on M120 or M134, and we go past this place and there's never hardly any cars there in the summertime. And you, you probably can't read it on here, but the sign says, get this, closed for the winter. You'd think it was Dairy Queen. And we're, we're looking at this place, and, and I'm thinking, man, we get the sawzall, we could cut that cross off there. That'd make a great Church of Christ building now, wouldn't it? <laughs> maybe someday. But maybe, maybe they would work out a deal with us. I mean, they, you, you never know. But that would be really cool. That's, that's some way down the line. We really like, like this church building. There's other church buildings where there's not a lot of people. You know... Uh, the, the denominations, there's only old people in these churches and, and you can see in the parking lots that there's not a lot of cars in them and especially the Presbyterian churches. I, I don't know how they are down here but don't look like they'd be real attended. Presbyterian churches. Woo. I, I don't know if you remember the, the, when I, I sent a report and I actually got to, to, to preach a gospel in, in the a Presbyterian church. So if you, if you see any ads wanted, send somebody over there. Be like the Apostle Paul, you know, when he used to go to the synagogues and teach the truth. Maybe the first time they've ever heard the gospel. Wouldn't that be awesome? 
working in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. This is at the, uh, the Superior District Library, Bayless Library. And when we, when we put the signs and stuff together, we got, had to be real careful to make sure we included the whole title of it because sometimes the librarians are, are, are very serious about the places where they are. And, and just for kicks, if, if ever you wanted to start a Bible study as an individual, you go in and you talk to the librarian. Number one, they know about everything that's going on within the community. Number two, when you have somebody come in on a weekly basis and you don't give them any trouble, you just go in, do your business, you're on time, you're, you're considerate, you call when you're not going to be able because of roads or something, they want you there because your numbers, that helps the library because that's how they, they determine how good the library is going. So, public libraries, I've got three of them now. One in Cedarville, the one in Rudyard, and now the one in, in Sault Ste. Marie that's allowing us to come in and teach the Bible. How cool is that? <coughs> Sault Ste. Marie is at the top of where we're at. On the other side, it's Sioux, Canada. We call it the Sioux. Um, in between Hessel and the Sioux, there's about let's see, it's 13 miles, 13, 24 uh, about 40 miles between Sioux and, and, and Cedarville. So once again, Pickford was a good spot as far as you know, picking where we needed to be. We've tried some other places and we haven't had some you know, success all the time. But I think that's part of trying to, to make God's work grow. You know, even you know, under the, the limited commission, he said, you go to these places, and if they don't accept it, you brush your feet off and you move on. But did he tell you to stop, just go back home? You have to keep moving. you got to try to keep on doing what you can do as far as reaching people when you're doing this type of work. You try to figure out ways. You know, when it was the two of us, Jill used to ask me, how are we going to get people? How are we going to get people? How are we going to get people? And you try and try and try. So we went up to... Uh, Bay Mills, and this is mostly an Indian population. They've got a religion up there that is half Indian kind of religion and half Catholic. They kind of combined the two, and it's it's pretty hard because you know it's a, it, it's a hard draw when you have to tell an Indian that he can't drink no more. I, I'm 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 just saying they they've got a real problem with alcoholism and and whatnot within the Indian tribes and whatnot. But we didn't get much success there, but we kept moving. Bay Mills is right up toward the top, up by Lake, Lake Superior there, right where the mouth of the St. Mary is. And right next to uh, Bay Mills is Brimley. And we even tried to get some things started there as well. Uh, we started with the morning service, which let, and we, we didn't have anybody show up for evening services. I, I made myself available. And we went there for over a year wanting somebody to show up and nobody did. So I needed to figure out what I could do with my time. And I thought, well, maybe we can start a, a, an afternoon service someplace else. And so we went up to Brimley. And the problem with that situation was I could never get the key to the building. You know, uh, the Pickford Township Hall, they give us a key. But we don't live within their township, and they're kind of like, oh, we don't know about that, and we couldn't get it arranged. We did get one service through, and uh, we couldn't get the commitment that we needed to keep it, keep it going. But it ain't like we're not going to go back and give it another whirl. <coughs> the work at Drummond Island, oh my goodness. You have to cross a ferry to get on Drummond Island. There's about 600 people that live there year-round. We figured if we could get a Bible study going on there, maybe I could work in their township hall and, and do an afternoon service there as well. Keep If just one person crosses a ferry. And, and we got it worked out. I, I mean, we were, we were gold. The lady said, sure, come on, get the key. And so we got on the ferry. The guy says, you can get a discounted uh, non-refundable pass. It'll save you lots of money, and it would. And so we bought this non-refundable pass. We got over there. We got the flyers up. We drove all over the island. 
went to go get the key and the lady, the, the head clerk says, do you live on this island? And I said, no. So we got a thing about people using our, our facilities that don't live on this island. I said, well, it, it's not for us. This is for the people who live on the island. She says, we got enough Bible classes. We got this Baptist preacher. He is really good with, with Bible classes. We don't need any more. So we had to, I'm trying other things. We go back and we replaced with our extra non-refundable trips to Drummond Island. We, 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 we wanted to go in and try some other things across from uh, Drummond Island. And Drummond Island's right there, like, a, like I said. And Detour Village is right across the island. Uh, right, probably, oh, thir what was it, four, or 38 miles from Pickford. And if you look where it says Strawberry Island, that is where Paula lives. One of, one of the people that attend with us now. She drives all that way to come and worship. Once again, we had a, a library that allowed us to come in with a really nice place to set up and, and we didn't get anybody. But we, I, I think it was because we, we really had, a, had some competition there and we would see that our, our flyers would be taken out and um, couldn't get it out. But we're, we may be back there again because I, now that I've discovered some free advertising with the newspapers, we may head out that way again. And the work in St. Ignace. And we've tried this twice. I'm trying desperately to get in there. There's a big population. Uh, they, I get, we got in with the librarian again, and he was very gracious, told us if we want to come back, come back whenever you want, he says. So we're keeping that in mind. Saying then Ignis is a good drive from where, we're, where we live. It's about 56 miles uh, from the cabin. So once again, with resources and, and everything else, we're real careful about, you know, where we put our stuff, if we don't get a, a good reaction pretty soon, then we have to pull the plug. But we don't count things out. So, transportation issues in the UP. You can imagine, can't you? Bet you don't imagine this. T stands for turkey. <laughs> well, I think J JR and Mike was with us when we got into a turkey traffic jam. Jill got into one, there was 40 of them that crossed the road out in front of her. It took her an extra five minutes to get to where she was going. Oh, the traffic up there is something else. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you guys, I come back here, only been up there two years, and I am scared to death to drive in Greenwood now. <laughs> I-65 scares me to death, and I drove that for 26 years at UPS. There's 341 people, 341,000 people in Lake County and 311,000 in UP. People that come to the Pickford Pickers drive themselves who are 100 years old and still get a driver's license because they can. When we crossed over that, that day to go to Drummond Island, we had to go through ice. The ice was breaking up. It was kind of cool sounding when the boat went through it, I have to say. But the people up there, they know how to get rid of the snow. The, these guys come within that far, and he's running about 40 mile an hour, 45 mile an hour, and he can come within just inches of the, the um, uh, post or the mailboxes. But it's nice because we can get out, we could have 15 inches of snow, and by noon we could be out doing what we need to do. Once again, people don't sit around in the UP because if they do, they get depressed. And you know what? A Bible class is not a bad thing to have, you know, on a, on a cold day and when you've got a warm place to be. You remember the pictures I showed you a couple years ago about people from the north? They always had a happy faces on, right? You know where it's cold? We're no different. This was eight degrees. We went to go get our, our, our mail. Our mailbox is about a quarter mile away. And uh, it's, it's a nice walk. It really is. <laughs> I just can't imagine JR doing it, though. <laughs> but we are happy. 
and well and warm. And that's all you need. We get a little bit of help. Uh, this is, we call this Colonel Clinker. He's our, he, he's what keeps our whole cabin warm. It's a pellet stove. The right below that's in case the electricity goes out, I got a boat battery with a, uh, a power inverter and with a trickle charger in case electricity goes out because if it goes out, we get cold. I mean, it gets cold fast. But I could run that for six or eight hours with that little bitty battery. We got it all set up. And last year we went through two and a half tons of pellets. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's a nice warm heat. It really is. I know this, is, this seems like I'm going out of what, what I'm talking about, but this is so important. I, wanted, I want to share this with you. The importance in coming together as a body of Christ. Matthew 26, 27, it says, Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Two things I want you to look at real close. All of you and my blood of the covenant. Look at that real close. The importance of participation. 1 Corinthians 10, 15. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourself what I say. It's not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. And is it not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body. For we all share the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat of the sacrifice participate in the altar. What did Jesus call us in the book of Revelations? royal priesthood. This is so important and, and you have no idea the importance behind this. Well, you, you, I imagine a lot of you do. The reason it's dangerous is the, the reason it is dangerous not to participate. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 and I want you to remember what I underlined in the other, uh, other places. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by what? The blood of Jesus by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And we all know that his body is the church, right? And since we have the great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promises faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up, meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and the raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, that separated them, and that has insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, and I will repay And again. The Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. When you put all that together, how important is it for us all to come together? As you look at each other, you know, on a, on a, on a Sunday basis, on a Wednesday night basis, do you, do you look at that person, that individual, and think, I'm glad to be, how, how can I be an encouragement? Because I, I'm, I'm confessing right now, I took it for granted. I totally took that for granted until I started doing the work up there. There are times I really miss brethren of like precious faith. Jill had gone down to see the kids. I stayed up to take care of things. 
And I was told by uh, some people from another congregation that they, they would come by. It was a 3 o'clock in the afternoon worship service that I was all ready to go. And this is what I looked at. I had one church service. What do you do with this? I, I, I'm the only person up there. I'm telling you, I cried. I'd never been in that situation. I don't know whether it was right or wrong. I wanted to worship. And oh, I'd give anything if just one brother would have been there with me. Just one. You don't know how important your attendance is within a body of Christ. Whether you show up, that's part of an encouragement. When we got people that come, you know how encouraged we are? Do you remember your Lord while you're on vacation? I, I got to tell you why this is just so important. I'm not forsaking the assembly of the saints even when you're on vacation. Let me tell you why. This is Mike. You know what Mike said? Members of the Church of Christ are serious about worshiping and even worship on vacation. We had people that came from Oklahoma, I think it was. We had Arkansas, Florida, Texas, and JR and, and Mike. Well, they weren't on vacation. That was a kind of working deal. But they had no idea, I'll bet, that they were serving as an example to Mike about how real being a member of the Lord's body is. That it's not something that, you know what unholy means? It means common. You can take it or leave it. Let it go. You don't do that. It's not a good thing. So the next time you think, well, I, I just don't feel like going. Consider it if you, you walked into a building and there was nobody there. This is a picture of the old sign. I, I, I couldn't throw it out. I, I had to hang on to it. I, I, I just couldn't throw it. I took it apart and you, I saved the other wood pieces. But I tell you what, if you guys are up in that neck of the woods, we'd love to have you come. We ain't got much as far as a place to stay, but we'll, we'll, we'll treat you right. and We'd love for you to come and worship with us. I'm trying. And with God's help, things are happening. God's word is powerful. It's so cool when things happen. You know the word, wow. And <laughs> when things start coming together, me and Jill look at each other and go, wow, how cool it is, you know, and it's just so awesome. And I want to tell you, thank you so much for, for helping us, you know, in the work up there. Please continue to pray, you know, for, for the church the world over. Some trying times are coming, brethren. But I also see some times that, that we need to strike while the iron's hot. The denominations are so out of whack right now. Goodness gracious. Use your influence like we talked about this morning. Are you a child in the kingdom of God tonight? Have you been thinking about it? You don't know whether you're going to have tomorrow or not. You don't know whether the past will lead you. Perhaps, maybe someday, you might be able to go spread the gospel. Wouldn't that be cool? If you're not a member of the Lord's Church, I, let, let me, I, I put this up, and Mike told me, I didn't put this up one time, Mike gave me a rough time. He said, what happened to your slide at the end tonight, Tim? He says, I'm trying to learn that. <laughs> but faith comes from hearing and hearing from the, from the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Believe, Acts chapter 8, 12. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Confess. And I tell you, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. Repent, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will likewise perish. 
be baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts 2.38, and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps maybe you've, you've wandered away from the fold of God. Like the prodigal son, you got a father who's looking way far away for you. He wants you to come back. Why don't you come back tonight? Why don't you make things right? You, you, you want to get rid of some really bad baggage? Tonight's the night to do it. Thanks again for this opportunity. Thanks for having me. God bless you all. And all glory 